live. Welcome everybody, Kathy Arbor here and welcome to my studio. It's a beautiful sunny day here in the first week of 2021 and I'm hope, hoping you're all having a fantastic creative day. So today, as the title says, we're going to do the book binding of my art file folders that I've been doing all year in 2020. And this is the book binding um, supplies that you'll be needing if you want to join along. Hey, Lena. How are you? It's beautiful here. I hope you're having a good good day there and it's not too bad as far as weather is concerned. Um, so this is a book binding I got on Amazon and it was only $10 and you got absolutely everything you need. The thread, the needles, the um, punch. Now this wasn't, wasn't in it, but um, all these were. You even got balloon folders and a bunch of needles, which is great. And a little container to put them in. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing uh, today is get that file folder done. And what we're going to be doing are these file folders that I've been doing all year. Let's see, now I just put this. I think that goes there. Hey, Judy. Devin. Joycey. Nancy. Good to see you all. So I don't know who has been um, arting along with me as far as the file folders are concerned. But, um, yeah, today I'm going to put it together. Um, now, I do realize that a lot of you had a lot of art per month and your file folders are a little bit on the chunky side. So we're going to have to, I was originally going to do the uh, Coptic stitch, but when I saw everybody's folders, <laughs> I figured, no, I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> um, so like Colleen, I know Colleen, Lena, I think yours had a lot of uh, art in them probably a, quite a few other people that had a lot in it. Hey Eileen. Hey Beck. Good to see you. So today I thought I'm going to put together, um, I decided to do mine. Now you can do yours whatever way you want, but mine aren't terribly fat. This is six months worth. So it's not too bad, but it's still a little chunky. And so I decided to do it in two books. So I'm going to have half year books. Now, if you want, you could do a seasonal. So um, January to March and then uh, March to, what is it, June or July. And you could do it that way, which would be awesome because then it'd be kind of like a seasonal. You don't have to rush back. You can do it as slowly as you want. I just like using these because I myself, as I do art, I prefer to do it in a loose um, paper or whatever I'm using. I... I do have a journal I work in, but when I'm doing um, painting, I do prefer to do it on a separate piece of paper. And then you, you know, you're kind of wondering where am I going to put it? And it's always, you know, loose, laying around or whatever. So I thought, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bind these and put them in folders. And now there's many ways of doing these. Um, uh, first, I will show you what I've done so far. Now. This is, isn't covered. This isn't the way the, the cover will be. But this is, binding is called the codex binding. So you can um, control how much depth you want, depending on how thick your folders are. 
and it stays it's a little bit wonky but I, I haven't finished it and I this was the first one that I did and it, I don't think I pulled the uh, wax binding string quite as tight as I should have so it's a little wonky but it's not going to fall apart so what the trick is um, is you have a ribbon and you want to find a fairly stiff ribbon, not something like organza or something like that. This is kind of, um, it's a material. I don't know if you can see the ridges in it. It's, it's a really tough ribbon. It's kind of like a um, canvas ribbon almost. So this one is 5 eighths, I believe, inches. Yeah, 5 eighths. If you're doing um, a fairly thick book or very weighty, I would suggest going probably to an inch or an inch and a half ribbon if you got it. If you don't have ribbon, I would probably do a even um, a canvas, cut it in strips, or uh, denim would be a good one also because it's going to be glued on to your cover. So we don't put the cover on yet. Da Vinci showed <laughs> Da Vinci showed you that. <laughs> I could I could go a long way with that one, Eileen. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> hey Kathy. <laughs> hey Kim. <laughs> so this is how we're going to do it now you can the ribbon will show so maybe you want to take in consideration that the ribbon will show so you want might want something a little decorative um it's very very easy it's the most it's one of the easiest binding methods i know of <laughs> So you shouldn't have any problems following along. But, and the nice thing about it is it will lie flat because of the way it's bound. So, wait a minute. So this is January. But see how it lies flat? Now you can see that I didn't pull it tight enough. It could have been tighter. So the next one I'm going to do, it'll be pulled a little bit tighter. But see how it lays flat? So we're not getting that, you know, that big um, alligator type mouth on it it lays flat and that's the nice thing about this because you do put a lot of stuff in them and you don't want to have them like this and you can't lay them flat And that's the end of this six months. And then you can do whatever you want on the um, cover afterwards. So it's glued down to the back and front cover. So I thought this would be the best way of doing these file folders. Because then you can, I'll show you, but... Before this is attached to the cover, these ribbons are loose. They're, they're just sitting across the stitch lines. So when you're done binding, you pull your two ends of the ribbon and it pulls it tight. Yeah, it is very sturdy. It's very sturdy. Um, now it's a little bit wonky, but not much. But that's because I didn't tighten these enough. The, um, the strings or you could even actually put another set of ribbons down because this is such a long piece so you could actually have five ribbons instead of the three 
or um, three very large ribbons might be best too. Depends. Okay. Now, before we get to that, <laughs> get your uh, credit card out. <laughs> I have an exciting book to show you, or books. And I'm so thrilled with this. I found this. And any of you UK people, you probably know her because she's from the UK. And I did um, um, contact her and ask if I was um, allowed to show these books because of the copyright. It says you have to ask permission. And she did say that she would be thrilled that I did. And... Um, she does not do any classes online. She only did in-person classes. So <laughs> this is so much up our alley. <laughs> this is by Frances Pickering. And she is a textile journalist or journaling artist. And she's been doing this for a long time. And her work is stunning. Look her up. It's absolutely gorgeous. So she incorporates paper, fabric, stitching, drawing, painting, and journaling all in one. Now, isn't that the most perfect <laughs> combination you've ever heard of? Yes, Eileen. <laughs> So, and she even, she even autographed it for me. And it didn't take long to get these books. You can get them in the UK if you go on her website. And it is Frances Pickering. Uh, um, look her up on Google. And uh, get her books through her website. It only took about three weeks to get to me. She does it right away. I hope she has a stack of them. Thanks, Kathy. Um, if you get them from her web, her website, she will autograph them for you. I don't know if it's any cheaper or if it's more expensive. I don't know. But she's a fantastic artist. And I love the way she has done these books. All the pictures are actual size of her journals. She's done... Um, like this, this here is the actual size of what she did. No, not this isn't, but this is. So she actually stitches papers into her books. She uses a lot of ink, watercolor, acrylic. And what she does, how she's done her books is she'll show the page. So this is the actual size of her page. So you can see in detail all her stitching and her um, little bits of paper and fabric that she's added to it. There's beads, there's lace. Um, the different ways she does her borders. Stitching on fabric and, and also drawing on fabric with pen. And then what she's done in the book is she's actually told you what she's done in this page. So she, instead of writing in a little paragraph like you normally see in like a book like this, she just writes on top. Dorothy, do you know her? Uh, let's see. Joan, Dorothy. Thanks, Kathy. So, um, let's see, where is she from? Publishing. Uh, 
doesn't say. You'll be able to find out where she's from. Um, yes, I do. Oh, awesome. Oh, you've taken several classes from her? Oh, wow. It must have been fantastic. Joan, have you taken anything from her? So, to get on with this, beautiful, beautiful book. I really strongly suggest getting this one. I, I just like the fact that she actually shows the, the real size that she's done. Yes, yeah, she's on Pinterest too. And she's on Instagram also. They were great classes. I bet. So, and she tells you in the back all of the um, different supplies that she uses and what they mean. Because sometimes what you have in the UK isn't what we have here. So it was a good thing to have also. Um, but it just goes to show you can pretty well put anything together into a book. And I just love that fact that you can use the paper with with the um, fabric. And she uses different fabrics and actually um, glues them onto the paper. Or she might use, um, there's some areas where she's used um, tissues drawn on tissues and then glued them onto fabric, which is interesting. Uh, just reading here, Dorothy, didn't she do some workshops in WOW? Mm, I'm sure I took a class with her on WOW. On WOW? Mm. I didn't see anything on her website. I don't is that a online class thing or is that in person you haven't heard of her oh she's got some fantastic work look at this this is another full-size picture of her books and I love the colors like look at this how she cuts the edges and and um adds all kinds of um, little knots and she mixes it up. There's a feather that she's sewn onto it and glued to it. A actual um, leaf that she's sewn onto the paper. And there were little rough edges. And the different needles and different things that she's used. See, she draws in it and then cuts it out. This is on top of a um, piece of paper. She uses buttons. That's gorgeous. I love that. Different fabrics that she uses, laces. She's cheaper. Oh, okay, great, Kathy. Thanks for looking that up. Oh, it's a workshop on the web. Oh, okay. Thanks, Eileen. I'll have to look that up when I'm off. Look at this, even the beads. Look at these. Isn't that gorgeous? I just love her work. So I thought, what a fantastic book to have found at this point in time, because we're all getting into the slow stitching and embroidery and everything. And I love 
both, but I wanted to combine the two. So this is what I'm going to get into, guys. So I'm going to probably be doing um, some um, file folders like this. Um, I'll show some of it on Thursdays, and then um, we'll see how I do with it, and maybe we'll um, put some on for the memberships also, if you guys are interested in this type of thing. I have done embroidery and textile art, but not the two combined. <laughs> so this will be fun. Um, so cute with the buttons. And, yeah, isn't it, Lena? Like, look at this. I love this. Look at that. How the edges are sewn with paper. That is so gorgeous. Yes, yeah, you need some of Maggie Gray's books. Oh, gosh. <laughs> this is cute. See how she cut the edge. She used lace and then buttons over top. And there's a card that she actually left the strings and then added the beading. Pearls and stitches. <laughs> Oh, I, this is my favorite. I love illustrations like this. This is this is the one thing that I want to get into. This type of work. But isn't that gorgeous? I am so excited. And she and she talks about dyeing her papers um, with um, inks and stuff like that. using a uh, bleach also just in oh thanks eileen <laughs> you're getting me back <laughs> oh this is cute look at these little things look aren't those cute so they're like little charms i love it she does tell you how she binds her books also she also has a, um, something in one of the books about making her own buttons this is gorgeous that is gorgeous look at that stitches to make the flowers and then the watercolor background oh, gorgeous oh you finished your snippet roll Awesome, Kim. You have all her books. Must be good then. Well, I'll look at it. <laughs> but I just love how she combines the two. And the books look so... And I like, you know, even though she's just telling you about what she's done here, you could do this and use it as a journal, like your daily journal. So the stitches could be a division of where you do your journaling. Um, this is a, a new book from the UK, Frances Pickering. Kathy put in a link to her website. It's cheaper on her website if you go there. And she, I got this book in three weeks. So she's, she's right on it. But you better get it fast because I think a lot of people are going to be ordering this book and I don't know how many people how, or how many uh, books she has. <laughs> so I'm going to be doing this in some of my um, lessons. Oh, I love that. I love that ragged edge. Thanks, Kathy. Oh, here's the materials. See, she gives you an explanation of all of the materials that she uses. Safety advice, buttons and beads, which she used. 
And she um, goes to the place called Art Van Gogh in the UK to get most of her uh, supplies. But you can, um, I did look into a lot of her stuff. There was one thing called acrylic wax, and I'm not sure if that's the same as um, the, um, what's that wax we got? Lena, well, you know, what's that wax you, you had me get? <laughs> um, starts with a D. Can't think of it. Is that the same as acrylic wax? Or is it two different things? Dorlands, yes. I'm wondering if it's the same. Does anyone know? Because she does, she does use a lot of this acrylic wax in her fabrics. So it's a gorgeous, gorgeous book. And she uses, she uses paper bags. She uses tissue paper, watercolor paper, all kinds. So that's that one. And then the next one is this, and it's similar but different artwork from her books. Do you not? No, not the same as Dorland's. It's not. It's is the uh, acrylic wax. Dorland's is not acrylic wax. Okay. Uh, Candy, do you know who would make acrylic wax? And maybe it's called something different. It is used with oil. What is acrylic? That's, yeah, maybe Candy will know. Um, so this is uh, another book of hers, and it's different artwork. It's, it's basically the same as the other one, telling you how she did each page. So, you know, Rick Racks, different um, fabrics. So we will try this. She does machine stitching in this one, too. But most of her stuff is um, hand-stitched. I love this. I used to get acrylic wax from NYC from a store that made it with and they stop. Oh, darn. I wonder where you can get it. I know they have. Uh, I did see something with. Um, I think it was Americana had an acrylic wax to be used for their chalk paints. Now, I don't know what, whether that would be the same thing. I'm not sure. Oh, thanks, Candy. Yes, Barb went crazy towards the end. Oh, hi, Rosemary. So beautiful, beautiful books. Again, gorgeous. You can make them any size. Um, many different types of papers could be used. You could use rice papers or um, any of your, what's that one I have? I have a really neat paper in the other room. I'll have to show it to you. I was thinking of, of this when I got this book. <laughs> been sitting in a roll for years. I use the wax for tubs. What wax is that, Rosemary? Or are you talking about the one that they don't make anymore? 
and she's she's got different ways of if you're too scared to start um, ideas to approach that. This is a really cute little little book. So we're going to do some of these acrylic wax. Look at that. Look at that book. Isn't that gorgeous? So both books are worth getting. Because it gives you two different types of, of uh, work in it. So more and more ideas, what you can do. So she doesn't use a whole lot of um, patterned. It's mostly um, just a white sheet that she dyes herself. And then she draws on. Oh, look at that. See, I like this type of thing. Um, just use floor wax in a can. I am serious, Kathy. Have you done this before, Eileen? Yes, Eileen, have you done it before? I have a folk art brand of home decor wax in a brown color called antique wax. I wonder if that's the same. Yeah, that, see, that was the one I saw. Um, and you can get it in a clear now. So I'm wondering if that would be the same thing. Yeah, actually, Lena, if, when I come to think of it, our, back in the days when we had the linoleum floors and then... Um, um, the vinyl flooring used to be able to get the wax to pour on. I wonder if that's the same thing. Because you could buff it. <laughs> that's a good, yep, that's a good idea, Kathy. Have Eileen on <laughs> to show what she did. Art Van Gogh acrylic. Yeah, um, but that's made in the UK. And it cost you a fortune to get it down here. I know that that's used to be used in some polymer clay jewelry making. That wax. Florax is fine. It buffs up great. Well, you know, it's just a piece of paper. Or a piece of cloth. So why not why not try it and see what happens? I'm gonna do that. Guys, we gotta stop being afraid to try things in case oh we might destroy a piece of paper. We can do another. Most of the floor waxes. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, um, Rosemary. Exactly. And it's a whole lot cheaper. Uh it was called yeah, exactly, Nancy. That's what I used to use. Futura. <laughs> so, yeah. So these are gorgeous books. So won't these be fantastic to do? Guys, who's in? Who's in for me? <laughs> Who wants to do this with me? It's Finwax acrylic. Okay, I've heard of fin wax also. Turtle wax never tried it though. Well, turtle wax is for cars, so I don't know if that's any different. I know turtle wax I used to use in our stained glass store for buffing up the windows. You're in? Awesome. The wax for Marble Room Granite is good, too. Okay. Yeah. I might 
of granite wax. We'll have to check. Yeah, check, Kathy, and you can try that. Cass, be sure to check out Maggie. Yes, I will. Maggie Gray's books. I'll write that right down now. There's a paper. Maybe gray books. All right. Okay. And then, well, because I was looking on Amazon at stitching and stuff like this, then I came across this. <laughs> Anyone done this? I love this. I never did any of this, but I sure want to give it a try. <laughs> Stump work. It's 3D. We need to do it on paper. Okay, we're uh, just wondering what kind of journal to start in. She did all hers. Um, she said she mixed her papers. So she had brown paper bags. She had fabric. She had watercolor. She had, um, she made up a bunch of sheets first. And like she put um, tissue paper on top of fabric. She... She did all kinds of stuff. And then she bound them. Download these free WoW classes. Oh, you're killing me, Kat. <laughs> Eileen. I'll have to go back on the chat to see, find these, or put it in Twitter for me. Like, I, this goes back centuries this work but like i love that bee <laughs> i think i bought this because of the bee like, he's all fluffy kathy k dennis too oh good idea dot <laughs> so you know and this one's for beginners so see, they actually cut them out of the fabric and then you can use them as a 3D. I think that's so cool. Now, mind you, this, this is going to take time. So don't expect to finish a page in a couple hours. This is something that will take time. Like, look at those. So depends how far you want to take this. But, you know, something like this put on the front cover of a journal would be beautiful. Like, look at that. Stump work. Yeah. It's gorgeous. So they, they use all kinds of... Um, batting and different things to make it 3d looking and then they actually they do lace work it's called neat um to make the it almost looks like very tiny crocheting look at that people <laughs> i think it'd be fun look they're making the little arms look at that that's cute little cabbage I like stuff like this. And then the beads. There's some wood beads that look like pears. But there. Isn't that cute? I think it's so cool. Why not add it to our stuff? And there's a peacock. Look at the little lambs. Aren't those the sweetest? I just loved it. Yeah. All right. So. Let's get started on our binding. So. Like I said, I'm doing um, a sixth month instead of the whole year bound together because there's a lot of 
chunkiness to it. So I'm going to stick with my three ribbons. And I'm going to see if I pull it tighter, if it'll be a little more stiffer. And I'm just using this fairly, um, I don't know what kind of material this is. It's probably a doesn't say uh, no but it's it's not your typical ribbon it's it's got ridges on it it's fairly thick so if you want to make sure those are cut and ready and what I did make sure they're all in order so July August September, October, November, and December. Yeah. Um, the one cast cast is um Codex. Yes, this is a codex binding we're going to be doing. Now, what you want to do before you start is you want to pierce all of your signatures, all of your folders. Oh, God. I'm going to demod you. <laughs> and what I have done is I've got about an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter from each end you want to make sure um, to get them all the right size and the right space apart and they have to match so what I did I made a template so this is uh, you see here there's a mark there then there's a mark there and that's the edge of my page okay and then um, there's about an inch, about an inch. Let me let me see. An inch and a quarter from this mark to that mark, and then this mark in between is one, two, three quarters of an inch. So you have an inch and a quarter, three quarters of an inch, and then four and a quarter inches, and then you start again, three quarters of an inch, and then four and a quarter, three quarters of an inch, and then an inch and a quarter. Do you want me to write that down? So we have an inch and a quarter, three quarters, four and a quarter, three quarters, four and a quarter, uh, three quarters, and inch and a quarter. Okay. Um, just reading, let's see, Kimmy, wait, I'm confused. Why is there no dryer lint in there? <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so you want to line up and then you want to mark each one 
with a pen on the edge of your file folder. So after you've marked them all, then you can take them and put them in either a telephone book and then take your all, one of these or a large uh, needle and you want to pierce all of your, let's see, did I pierce this one? I don't think so. So you can just lie this in the cradle. I don't have my phone book down here. And then just mark it. Like so. And then just take your all in through it again if I can see it there it is right. there yeah there it is so make sure you can see them it makes things a whole lot easier and then pile them in order. So there's July. Make sure these are big enough. Thing I looked at these didn't see them very well October There's so many ways of doing this one, too. You can, I've seen, um, actually, I'll show you the book where I got it from. Because you can actually make them very fancy by adding beads to the strings. And that looks really pretty. I'll just leave those up for now. Okay. So 
once you have those, you can take one and pick your thread you want. I was using the white or off white, and this is a wax thread, and I did about two yards. Um, if you have a hard time finding the hole, stab your finger. <laughs> yeah, I haven't done that yet. <laughs> And you want one that's not as sharp. If you get a dull one is best because then you don't, we're going back into the hole that you put the thread through. So sometimes when you have a, a, um, a real sharp needle, what happens is you actually end up going through the thread and you don't want to do that because then you can't pull it tight. So you don't want to knot the end. Oh, I'll show you that book. This is the book I got it from, cover to cover. Um, I think some of you might have this one. And there's what we're doing. See, you can do it many different ways. There's one that they've done a whole bunch of stitching and it's on an accordion style. So there's many ways of doing this. We're doing the very simple, basic one. <laughs> so as you can see, there's our tapes. I have that one and I think you can download it too. Oh, awesome. Um, okay. What you want to do is you want to start I'll do it from this way because it's a little easier um, and then start from the second hole from the top and put your needle through and leave about a four inch tail. What I like to do is take a piece of tape and tape it to your page. Just so that it doesn't pull through. Uh, just reading, I have a frame for doing these book bindings. It makes it even more Awesome. You have to post it on the Twitter there, Dorothy, so you can share. Okay, so then we want to take it up to the first hole. Bring it through. And 
And then you want to place one of your ribbons in between that. And then go back into the second hole. So I'm just holding the... So it's like that. Then you do a running stitch all the way down. So the next hole, the top of the next, where the next um, ribbon will be. And then go in. Then come out. Find it. Go in. Oh shoot! I got put the. <laughs> Where did I put them? Put your ribbons in. <laughs> I did. You can, at this point, you can just lift them. But put your ribbons in. Like so. And then you pull towards the direction that you were sewing. So to tighten it, you can just pull towards you because I was going down. Okay. Does everybody understand so far? Okay, so then you go back up into that second hole from the bottom. Make sure you make it, keep it tight. So this is when you can tighten it as you go. that's tight then you take your next one put it down make sure it's the right side up <laughs> wait a minute am I doing it the right way yep Oh, I started upside down. What did I? Wait a minute. No, I'm right. Almost. And then, if you have a, um, I have these. So it's a little easier to keep them together. So you want to line up and then flip. The top, I only have one, so I'm just going to do one side just to keep them together and they're not going all wonky on you because it can get a little frustrating. Like all right. Then you go in the second hole from the bottom of your next signature. Go 
Okay, what did I do here? Okay, so the second hole from the bottom, put your, make sure your ribbon's still in there, and it's laying over your second one. And then you go through the bottom one again, bottom hole. Make sure your ribbon is over it. And then you go through the top again, second hole of the second signature. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. So I've gone through back up again. Of the second signature so I'm in on the inside of the signature so then you do the running stitch all the way up again like you did in the first one Make sure you keep it good and stiff and then through the second one over and then through the top again. I caught the wings off my fairy. Furry um, fairy. I'll glue them back on. <laughs> and then back. I just pulled out my. my um, ribbon. <laughs> okay, tighten. Okay. Then you take your next signature again. So, work working backwards here. And then we want to clip together. I'm going to take that out. Clip it. Now, Kiss is not only squishing fairy, she's sewing them down. <laughs> Little darn things keep getting away on me. <laughs> Do what you got to do. Okay, there. Okay, and then you start with the second hole again of the new signature on the top. Oh, wait a minute. Nope, that's wrong. I got to go through the top yet. Jumped the gun. Oh, I got 
got to go through that other one first. This one. It is very difficult to do online, I must say. Yeah. You always take it back to the second one, second hole from the top or the bottom when you're adding a signature. Okay. Now we can go through the top. Uh, the second one. Now we can flip it. There. Then we go back up to the top. Put your ribbon around and then back down into the second hole again. Okay, make sure that's good and tight. And then do your running stitch. sure the ribbons are down. Bottom. And then through the second one from the bottom again. You could probably tape those um, ribbons down too if you wanted to. So that they don't keep moving on you. Okay, I'll take your next one. Let's see, make sure it's the right way. Yep. And through the second hole from the bottom. Through the bottom. Make sure you put your ribbons up. Did it again. 
did it again. I do wrong. I did something wrong here. Um, top. I did something wrong. <laughs> it goes through there. through there. Oh no, I didn't. Uh, I was right. <laughs> then you go back into the second hole. I'm probably confusing you all. <laughs> Get the book. <laughs> Get the book. I'm not an expert on this in any <laughs> way. stitch top and back out the second hole. Then you add the next one. And let's clip that one. All right. So much pretty artwork in these folders. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Lena. Okay, so through the bottom, second one, or not the bottom, the top, second one. To the top of the sec of this. Make sure your things are, and then through the second hole again. And then the running stitch.
into the bottom, second hole. Yes, I missed. Okay, there. I missed something. Oh no, there it is. I forgot to put the. Be sure you keep the tabs or your ribbons in. See, I didn't. <laughs> I missed one. Kind of have to. play a bit with the ribbons as you're doing this so it's kind of a pain but it is I think a lot simpler than a lot of the other and then back down again Next one, last one. That's got the wire stuck on, or not the wire, the... Try not to get sewn into your string. Just enough. And then into your second one. Get the second hole again. stays in there. Okay. And the running stitch. I'm just going to have enough string. So the two yards works just right. So if, you, if you're doing a really fat one you might need more than two yards You guys are probably a whole lot more experienced at this than I am, since you guys are more into the bookmaking than I am. But I just thought this was for a beginner binding person. I think this is a fairly simple one to do. Okay. And then back in to the second one. And you can make some knots.
And then you can either leave the string that's there or that way so I don't lose it. And then you can tie off. Where is it? Oh, there it is. This one as well. So you can just make some knots on the end. Now, if you don't have these, it, the book can be a lot more wonkier. But when I pull these, see how you can make the book tighter when you pull them? So when you're putting your... cover on, say this is your cover, I've got one made up yet, you can glue them down, let this one glue first, so it's good and, and um, dry, then when you turn over and put the other side of your back cover on, you can pull these really tight and then glue them down and I would use some clamps or something or something heavy to set on as it dries and then you can um, put your cover to however you want so yeah see this one lies a little bit tighter than the other one that's still not as tight because I, I don't have my ribbons glued yet but the strings are a little bit tighter. But it's a lot more secure than the, the other one. I find the other one moves too much. So if you got a thicker ribbon, it'll even be as, it'll be a lot more stabler. Ah, oh, Codex Binding Supplies, one case of scotch. <laughs> You don't go buy my video guys <laughs> like it's easy um but make sure you have like some of these to keep it from moving on you and it's just a matter of keeping the the ribbons over your each signature as you as you're binding it cast wood book binding tape be better to use than ribbon Um, the book binding tape, has it got, uh, an adhesive on it? Like, has, is it kind of like your other tapes where you can take the adhesive strip off? Because if, if that's the case and if it's a, uh, a cloth, yeah, it'd probably be a great thing. Um, some dove, some does, and some don't. Okay. Um, yeah, you could use the binding ribbon. Um, you just can't have it sticky as you're binding it together, though. That's the thing. You have to have it so that you can um, pull it. It, it. And you're adding a signature each time. So if you had your covers, though, and you were, you were doing it, like, you could take your first signature and then take your cover and glue it to your cover and then continue with your signatures so that it doesn't pull from you. So book binding tape with removable tape. Yeah, that would work. You just don't remove the tape. And t well, see, then that doesn't really work either, though, because how are you going to remove the tape 
backing if it's already bound in between those. You know what I'm getting at? I think I think it'd probably be just as easy just getting the binding tape without any glue on it. <laughs> or strips. Yeah, strips of fabric is what I said I uh, was talking about in the beginning. Um, if you have some linen or canvas or even jeans, cut them into strips and use that. I love reading. <laughs> yeah, I do too. Or typos. So I probably myself, if I do when I do another one, I'll probably use a really thick binding of either a canvas or a really good fabric that's fairly stiff. That's not too um, that doesn't uh, not you don't want something that's just gonna fold and. Like this isn't isn't the best because it does it's not bad but you don't want something that's very soft. I don't know. I didn't see her, Lena. She may have, I don't know. Um the other thing I did get too for these books that we're going to do <laughs> Look what I got. Nice canvas in a roll. You can get 12 inches by 5 yards for $12. And it's already primed. So I was thinking, why can't we stitch on this? I think it would be perfect for stitching on, hand stitching. And then it's stiff already. Yeah, strong uh, cotton or jean would work. <laughs> well, look at it. It's, and it's a lot cheaper than buying a, a canvas. We could use this for, um, to put on top of our covers too. Um, I painted muslin for a journal covers. Yeah, that would work. Muslin. I think that looks great. Yeah. So this is, um, you can get all kinds of sizes. I would probably recommend getting the already primed one if you're planning on doing any sketching on it or drawing or painting. Um, in that book by um, Frances Pickering, she did have mention in it. Uh, what was it? She uses, um, oh, it was the acrylic wax. That's what it was. She uses the acrylic wax on her material if she's going to draw on it or um, um, stitch. So I guess it must it must make it uh, fairly uh, stiff then maybe. How smooth is it? It's very smooth. It's um. Well, I don't think you can see the texture to it, but it's um it's not a really. It's not smooth, smooth, but uh, let's see. I'll find a pencil and I'll show you. So you could still, it's all right for drawing.
you could sand it if you want it's like super smooth or you could actually put a um, coat of uh, matte medium on it if you want it smoother to fill in the textures a lot, lot cheaper than craft text and it's fairly thick that's you know that's pretty thick this is a uh, vivid creative technology it's called vivid ww dot vividvinyl.com it's in Canada though but it's um it's canvas that's been primed look for uh, rolled canvas you can get it in all different uh, shapes and sizes oh well, not shapes but sizes as far as width and length yeah it's a prime canvas roll Look has medium weight prime canvas. Um, this was a medium. And this one was fairly cheap, but this is in Canada, so I don't know what you guys would be able to get in the states. But the twelve, this is twelve inch by five yards. So I, I thought I may as well get the height I want. So if I'm using it in a book, I wouldn't want any more than 12 inches. And you don't really want to have to cut a lot. Unless you have a um, one of those uh, roller cutters for fabric. And a, and a good steel ruler. Yeah, it was double primed. Oh, that's the Viv Vivid brand on. Okay, thanks, Kathy. But yeah, it's super nice, and we could. Oh, I've got a lot of plans for this one. We could actually make slip covers for our journals too. <laughs> so we could do a painting on it and then sew it. Could do you could use this as a base for making um, a material you've seen the oh what are they called um, I do have a book let me just hold on I'll show you the book So like this um, this is just stitching and watercolor uh, let's see if I can find something here you can do the stitching and watercolor and then I don't know if I can find one here. Okay. Uh, find a bigger picture there. Okay. 
if you look at this one, these pieces, this right here and all this, this is this part here is one piece of fabric. And this is one piece of fabric, but they've cut it into shapes. Same with these right here is actually a bunch of little pieces of fabric and then they've sewn leaves onto it. Same with the, the branches and the trees. That's the type of thing I'm used to doing. See, there's the pattern for the tree. So each piece can be cut out of fabric and then you stitch on top of that a pattern of leaves. That's what I like doing. See? So there's different types of fabric and then they've stitched over top of it. Now this is mo um, uh, what is it called? Free motion stitching. So it goes fairly quickly. It's not it's not done by hand, but you could do it by hand if you don't have a machine, but it take a very long time. Um, machine embroidery, you can get into that type of thing. I've always loved this stuff. Like, look at that. Mixed media, painted quilts. These are great. The quilt, Art Quilt Studio. It's got all kinds of, look at that. These are great books. If you like this type of, these are older books, but. Here's one for Colleen. <laughs> See, it's uh, different pieces of fabric put together and then they quilt it. This is how I like to quilt. All right. Nice, Kathy. This is your style. Draw and paint canvas. Can't wait to see. Thanks, Dar. Yeah, it's fun. It really gets your imagination going, too. Um, now, really, you could do this with your leftover um, scrapbook paper and stitch. Why not? You just have to make sure that you're, um, you'd have to put a stabilizer of some sort underneath your paper, like have it glued or whatever, uh, or one of those stabilizers that, um, you can, that glues onto the back of your fabric. Uh, Lena, are very quick at quilting. Lena is fantastic at quilting. She has the most awesome quilts I've ever seen. Yes, you do. To do this type of quilting, you do need a lot of different fabrics. And I, I gave all, all my fabric away pretty much. So. I probably, now that everything's locked down again, that won't be happening as far as getting fabric anymore. But um, I've got a ton of, of scrapbook paper. So if we could find a way of stabilizing that scrapbook paper and then sewing on top of it, you could do the same thing. It's almost like collaging. It's a collaging, but with fabric, really. If you think about it. Yeah, you got no bins either. I used to work in a fabric store, so <laughs> I had tons of it. 
And then I just got out of sewing and needlework. There are tons of people that, that could show you, Sherry. Um, myself, I'm not going to get into the quilting end of things. Um, I don't want to go down that expensive rabbit hole. <laughs> Because I got so much paper, I got to use up my paper. But um, there's a ton of people that are doing it. So look on the internet. Um, Lena does it, but I don't know if she'll be doing any. Um, she's still figuring out her channel. So she's not sure what she wants to um, be doing. I don't know if there's anyone else on here. Is there anyone else that's going to be doing some quilting? Could speak up and um, Sherry would like to know. I used to teach classes at a quilt store, so I have a little bit. Oh, I bet you do. <laughs> there, Eileen, you need to start a channel. Quilting, just saying. You need to start. Come on. And you've got a ton too. Oh, I'd love to. Mm, I used to love working in that shop. It was just like eye candy 24 hours. <laughs> you only do art quilts? Yeah. But I'm sure if you just, uh, if depending on what type of quilting you want to do, Sherry, there's all kinds of um, channels on. Just type it up. There's some awesome quilting um, channels for, for basic learners or for whatever you want to do. Yeah, Dorothy gets right into it. She's dyes stuff. She's oh, Dorothy, you need to show more of your stuff. You need to get on um, Instagram and post some stuff. Yeah. I, I kind of agree with you there, Eileen. <laughs> I, I couldn't get into that, the repetitiveness. Same with um, uh, knitting. Couldn't do it. It was too repetitive. It drove me nuts. <laughs> I prefer, I did a bit of um, crocheting. I liked crocheting, but knitting, nope. Quilting, nope. Art quilting, yes, but not regular quilting. Yeah, please try. I'd love to see your, your needlework and your quilts and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, over and over is bad. It just gets monotonous. Mind you, they do look gorgeous when they're done, but you can only have so many quilts in your house. Kind of like, what do you do? That was the same with stained glass, I found. Although I love doing stained glass. But for doing it for yourself, you can only make so much stained glass. That's probably why I opened the store. Because <laughs> I wanted, I loved it and I wanted to do so much. So I started making things for people. Hey, Sophia. I crochet, but it left. But I'm left-handed. Oh, yeah, it would be. When you use different scraps, I think it looks very fun and cool. Yeah. Yeah. When, when I saw, when I, the kind of quilts that I would like were never the traditional square, triangle, hexagon, that type of thing. I, I went with the really different stuff that was like really hard to do. Stained glass, I want to learn how to stain glass art someday. It's not that hard. You have to be comfortable with handling glass, though. 
I found that um, the students that I taught that were very nervous about getting cut had the most difficulty in, in breaking the glass properly. But then it's almost like it's almost like having um, going into a fabric stop, shop because when you do stained glass, there there is no pattern per se. Everything is handmade in stained glass pretty well. You know, except, well, there are a few that are machine made, but um, there's not a fixed pattern. So you had to have a lot of different colors and different like you'd have blue you can't you couldn't just have blue you had to have many shades of blue and then textures to it and then maybe wisps or some are transparent some are opaque and like it just grew into this huge amount of storage you would have to have with stained glass yes these colors are amazing I love the I love the um, handmade stained glass, like Kokomo is gorgeous and Bullseye and uh, Oceana. Have to uh, have a great day. Dot, stay well. Yeah, so stained glass is kind of like uh, the fabric industry. You have to have, when you're doing this type of art, you have to have a huge selection to be able to do one painting or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and I don't know if I want to go down that, that expensive rabbit hole. And then you can get into different threads and different... Um, all kinds of textiles and trims and rope and oh god there's this endless the soldering didn't bother me at all what type of soldering did you do Eileen did you do the cane or did you do the foil method I got into quilting as a way of using up old fabrics and old clothes. That way you have a variety of next. Yeah, that's true, Sophia. Um, <laughs> I don't have that many clothes though. <laughs> I'm not a. I'm not one of these people that likes to shop for clothes. So I'll, uh, I have just a very small amount of clothes, so I don't have that. And then all the thrift shops are closed. Cane and foil. Ah, I still have a few rolls of the foil tape. Well, you can use it in your sting in your um, <laughs> your journals now. That's how they used to do, um, Sophia. The way back when is they used to use the old clothes for making the comforters and, and quilts for their beds out of the old stuff they had. Thanks, um, C, for coming in. Have a great day. You have? Ah, cool. I, I got all, I sold my whole works of everything to do with stained glass when I sold the house. The, luckily, the guy that bought my house, he was one of my customers in the store. So when he saw that it was me, he asked, oh, how much do you want for all your stained glass supplies? So we made a deal and I just left it all there. So it worked out great. Some seem to be buying lots of India quotes.
India quilts. Are they like made of silk and lots of sparkle and stuff? Or are they totally different? Devin, thanks for coming in. For all that's here, Devin Rex also has a channel, so go check her out. She's got a fantastic channel. She's also a mixed media artist that tries all kinds of stuff. Safari fabric, I bet. Hmm, I'll have to look that up. That'd be interesting just to check out. So what else is everyone else doing this year? Are you going to get more into the craft um, area of things? Or are you going to get into quilting? Or are you going to get into the mixed media? What's your plans for this year? Oh, you're welcome, Devin. I love your channel. I love your last one that you did, showed your book. That was so cool. You got some fantastic sketching in there, too. You should do a lot more. They make beautiful color quilts. I am not buying... <laughs> Famous last words, <laughs> all the above. Yeah, it's not enough time in the day, Kathy. It's called Cantha. No bling, bright colors, and long hand stitching with two layers. So is there batting in between? Oh, is that, what's that, Kathy? Is that for the uh, India quilt? Devin, Devin's, oh, Devin's channel, okay. Thanks. Planning on working more on my journals. My youngest is getting into sewing and book binding, so I'm encouraging them. Awesome! Yep, encourage them to keep the creative um, abilities going. So many people shut their creativity side down um, when life gets in the way. You really shouldn't find time to do something creative each day, if not a couple times a week. It's very important for your own personal growth and keeping you sane, <laughs> especially in these days. You need that. There are lots of Cantha quilt sites on Etsy. I have bought a few of their prices. Oh! And it's a beautiful form from the east, but not India. Quilts are so cheap to buy. So have they got the batting in between, or is it just two pieces of material? I've never heard of them. Here's who I buy from. You should show it on your next stream, Kathy. I'd love to see it. Or, or a picture. No batting. Awesome. That's interesting. Hmm. Huh. 
Yeah, they would be nice throws for the summer. Uh, from the last three years, I have worked seven days a week. Oh my gosh, Brenda. Now I work six and it has been a huge positive choice for me. My clear brain is happy. So true. Yeah, it is. It's very true. Rosemary and Hottie Popo show it. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm going to have to check that out. Anything creative, too, can be framed. It doesn't have to sit on a pillow or on a bed. You know, you can do wall hangings. There's all kinds of stuff you can do with them. Awesome. And, and like, I like to think outside the box. So, you know, whatever color or technique that they're doing with that, how can I bring it into what I'm doing? So keep your creative juices going by thinking outside the box. How could you add something that you have a love for into your artwork? Oh, boho's cool. I love boho. All right. Well, I better get going. I hear my puppies whining upstairs. So hopefully I will finish this. I'll put the cover on and then maybe next week we will decorate or make some covers for these. Maybe I'll use some of this. <laughs> maybe I'll do some stitching. I don't know. We'll have to see. But let's try something. So I'll let you guys go and you all have a fantastic creative day and stay safe and get into your creative mode. And, you know, if things are starting to get to you, shut it out, get into your creative mode and start doing something. It'll save your soul. So have a good day, everyone, and we'll see you on the Internet somewhere.